show an op amp circuit, in this case, that has second order dynamics, just resistors and capacitors. And we're going to use three of them, but also it's a fairly straightforward circuit. This particular circuit topology is known as a Tau Thomas configuration, a second order configuration. And there's interesting things when you look at this particular circuit that kind of, kind of immediately jump out at you. You immediately go, wait, I see an integrator here. I see something that's actually looking like a low pass, first order low pass filter block, because I see the, res the, the resistor and the capacitor block, but also resistor and feedback. So this is a typical low pass filter block. And then I see another block that's just giving me a gain of minus one. And the gain of minus one is just simply to invert the sign, because I'm gonna need to do a sign inversion. But it's basically a low pass filter integrator and then a sign inversion, and then I build that into feedback. And as a result, I can get second order dynamics out of this particular structure. Well, you say, okay, well, let's take a look at the structure then and see what we might find as we're going through this. Let's see what, let's see what we get. Okay, so when I look at the circuit, I'm going, I'm going to take a look at the first block. And what I'm going to see here is that I can pretty much pull a low pass filter block, I can pull the integrator block, and I can then create the, the gain block. Well, notice that here V2 is equal to minus V1, and then I can just take V, I get the sign shift, so I can basically make this related to V out. This particular block here is now going to be, you know, I can now substitute that V1 out of there as a result. I can substitute V out, V1 in terms of V out. Combining those things gives me this resulting equation below, which then allows me to ask a couple additional questions here as I put things together. And you think, okay, this is going to get kind of interesting. Hmm. And you go, how does this look? Well, one of the first things I see, I get a tau. Well, tau is now going to be RC. Okay, and that's going to be the baseline R and C, uh, which is then going to give me roughly a con time constant here of, um, you know, it's roughly going to give me a time constant that's um, going, to, going to put me into a cutoff frequency of one megahertz in here. And you think, okay, that looks pretty interesting, right? You know, because you're looking at, you know, sort of, you know, you're kind of looking at sort of sub one, sub um, one microsecond, 0.16 microsecond range. You think, okay, that's cool. And then you say, well, what is the Q? And that's an interesting question because I've got an R over R2. Now I've got the tau already in place, so I know that this has to be equal to one over Q. So that has to be R3 over R, or R2 over R. I get an R2, which is 300K, and an R, which is 100K. So that means that my Q ends up basically just looking like the ratio of those two resistors. Well, I can make the ratio of those two resistors in a fairly straightforward way. Um, that ratio then is, you know, in this case, it's just going to be there, and it's going to give me a value of 3. I also know that I have a particular gain for the circuit, the R over R1, and that gives me... 10k over 5k, which is then a gain of 2, and again, it's, an in, it's going to give me potentially an inverting gain out of this. And so that's, again, you can kind of see that because you go through an inverting stage, an inverting stage, an inverting stage, you kind of expect that. Um, and as a result, you get this sort of very straightforward structure. Now what's also interesting is that Vout is a, a low-pass filter response. If I were to look at the response at V1, I actually get a bandpass filter response. Um, because if you think about it, I would need a bandpass response. I need an S in the S in the numerator to then deal with the additional integration, which gets rid of an S to get to the output. So I would expect that I'm going to get a bandpass filter configuration there. And so then if I plot this response for these numbers, I'm going to be sitting here at a gain of 2, you get a Q peak of Three, which then kicks my gain, you know, the gain of two, which means this is going to be right at right about six, and then this falls off as a double integration or minus 40 dB per decade. So I can look at this structure, and it gives me a very nice structure that I can very directly solve for various components, both in terms of tau, q, and tau and q and time constant, in a very straightforward way based on the various values around the circuit.